I don't know who uh, is the origin uh, of it, but of them, but there are five well known words or sayings set forth to sum up in many ways the teaching of the Reformation and in many ways summing up the gospel. Uh, 500 years ago, they remain true today as ever. Uh, the five solas, that's the Latin word, five alones or onlys. Uh, they, I don't think there's any particular order. Salvation is by grace alone, uh, by Christ alone, through faith alone, uh, scripture alone uh, is our authority, and all is to the glory of God alone, solely Deo Gloria. And I hope I am not uh, misrepresenting or, or twisting the scriptures, but I would like to show them in some way or show these as applications from this psalm. Uh, the, the important word often uh, with these particular sayings is the word alone or only. Salvation is by grace alone. And uh, because many will say, yes, we believe in the grace of God, but not grace alone. Yes, we believe that faith is important for salvation, but we don't believe in faith alone. We believe the scriptures are a very important source of truth, but they're not our only truth. And so they will go on. But in taking away the only or the alone, they sadly miss the grace of God, miss the salvation of Christ in himself alone. And uh, this psalm shows, I believe, that faith truly exercised is only in God, in God alone. Uh, again, it says, uses the word time after time. Uh, and the very first word, though translated in our uh, translation, truly, in one sense, it wouldn't sound right if it was translated only, but the Hebrew word does mean only. My soul only waiteth upon God. From him cometh, or one might say, simply is my salvation. Uh, David we don't know when he penned this. It could have been many different instances when he was, in one sense, shut up unto God in a, in a very real sense, a very practical sense, that he had no way of having human help. And all he could do was look to the Lord. And we never find him uh, trusting, putting dependence in his own goodness or in some other God, it is in the Lord alone that David trusts. And one might say even beginning with Goliath, there he is, goes out to meet Goliath. There's no one else to assist him, but he rests upon the Lord and upon by faith in the Lord, wonderful faith, wonderful trust in the Lord alone. And other times, obviously, in, his, in the cave, chased by uh, Saul uh, in the forest and almost caught by Saul. Certainly, yes, he has his men with him, but they cannot really compete with Saul and his soldiers. Uh, and time again, he is, must call upon the Lord and rest his confidence wholly in the Lord. And we, if we are to be saved, to know the Lord and to know his forgiveness and pardon, our confidence must be only in the Lord and in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope uh, that will come through uh, whilst going through the psalm. But uh, I'll just go through it. it. It is emphasized time and time again. Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. David is looking to the Lord, my soul waiteth, the Hebrew is literally, is silent before God, upon God, simply 
trusts in the Lord, looks to him as the one from whom he will receive salvation. And as I said, it may be in a practical sense, but in one sense it is most uh, above all things to do with our eternal salvation. He, he goes on, he only, he alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. The Lord alone is his rock. He has no one else. He has the mighty men at times to help him, but uh, they cannot deliver him fully or completely. He is often tied up, as it were, unto the Lord, but he is happy to look to the Lord. He only is my rock from a young man, has trusted the Lord from a young man. He has known his deliverance time and time again. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. And then he introduces possibly what is his difficulty and problem. How long will he imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a growing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. And I think we may presume he is the one who is the object uh, of the peoples, whoever it may be, attack, trying to bring him down, whether by deceit and cleverness uh, or openly, but plotting in some measure against him. And uh, in one sense, we should not be surprised as king. Uh, politicians are constantly uh, concerned about those that would stab them in the back and so on. They will have those who will be seeking to cast them down. I heard a scientist being interviewed, a Christian scientist, and uh, the interviewer said to him, well, presumably you, uh, some people sometimes oppose your Christian view, uh, your colleagues and so on. And he laughed and said, presumably, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and uh, it is the nature of some callings in one sense, but in one sense of all people, uh, that, there, uh, that there is one who will move others to bring down, uh, bring down men and to seek ultimately, they only consult to cast him down from his excellency, that uh, there is an enemy of our souls who will seek to bring us down from being made in the image of God, uh, as it were, ensnared and brought to follow his ways. And men, by nature, are deceitful. As uh, Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And we look not to men for salvation, uh, not that all seek to bring us down, but we look to the Lord. And if I may just pause there, uh, and one could almost bring any of these five, five sayings, but salvation is not from us. It's not from uh, our good deeds. We by nature are but sinners, but is by grace alone, by the gift of God alone. Uh, David looks to him, my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. I'm not looking uh, with any merit. I'm not trusting in the Lord for reward. I'm simply looking upon him and depending upon him for mercy. Uh, does not trust in himself. He does not trust in other men. And uh, we, in one sense, are no better by nature than those he describes. Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. Without the mercy of God, without the salvation of God by grace, 
we would all be the same, a bowing wall, a tottering fence, as it were, ready to collapse, the wall ready to, to burst and to collapse, the fence rotten, ready to fall down. We are by nature separated from God, and we simply, in one sense, await the judgment of God. But, uh, and by nature, without the Lord, we all ultimately bring others down as well by our bad example and by our wrong words. But God is gracious and God will save men by grace alone and uh, will not on account of our merit, not on account of our worth, but of his free and sovereign grace. We cannot explain it. Uh, there's nothing in us that gains it, but that is all that we can put it down to, as we read in Ephesians 2, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, makes it very, very plain, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, grace is the way that God saves lost sinners, and God would save David, save David as a young man, by his grace would save him time after time, by his grace. And uh, he goes on, verse 5, my soul, wait thou only upon God. He, as it were, admonishes himself. My soul, wait, look only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. And if I may simply say, salvation is in Christ alone. He only, uh, my soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. Christ alone is the only savior. And the great snare that men fall into is of trusting Christ and others, trusting Christ and Mary and the saints. Uh, but if we trust in Christ and the saints, we are not trusting wholly in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're trusting in other things as well. And not all our trust is in the Lord. But uh, David says, he only is my rock and my salvation. The Lord is the only one who has suffered and died for sinners, the only mediator between God and men, the only one who is God and man, the only one in whose hands are, is salvation, is the forgiveness of sins, in whom uh, the promises of God, all the promises of God are yea and are men. Uh, and so in Christ, as God alone, is our salvation. Let me read this little quote from Stephen Charnock. Let us look upon a crucified Christ, the remedy of all our miseries. His cross has procured a crown. His passion has expunged our transgression. His death has disarmed the law. His blood has washed a believer's soul. This death is the destruction of our enemies, the spring of our happiness, and the, the eternal testimony of divine love. And I'm sure in a measure, this is what David is saying. I will, the Lord alone is my salvation. I have it not in anything else, not in myself, not in anything else, but in the Lord. And Christ has come as God to effect that salvation. David knew and looked to the Lord, and that day when the Savior would come, he understood precisely uh, that to his line would be born one divine uh, who would set up his kingdom and would reign forever. He would be the Messiah. And as the 
that the Old Testament scriptures taught that the Savior would come and bear our sorrows and be the seed of the woman that would bruise the serpent's head. And so David may look to him as his rock and his salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In Christ, he is safe. And in Christ, we are safe. The enemy of our souls may make all manner of accusation against us. In one sense, rightly so. Uh, we are far from perfect, but we are safe in the Lord Jesus Christ, with him as our righteousness. Uh, in God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Literally, my refuge is in under the shadow of his wings, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it is sad when you meet folk who are departing from these ways, departing from these, this faith, putting their trust in other things, maybe as well supposedly as the Lord Jesus Christ, but they ultimately forsake the Lord uh, and will not have him as their saviour. But then his counsel to his readers or his hearers, verse 8, trust in him at all times, ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. If God is a refuge, it's been a refuge for him, he would counsel others to do exactly the same. And all he says is trust in him, trust in him at all times, ye people. And uh, faith alone, that is the core of the gospel. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Simply trust him. Trust him, as David says, with all your heart. Pour out your heart before him, but trust simply, trust him, trust him wholeheartedly. I know the gospel is repent and believe, uh, and people have endless arguments about which may come first or, or whatever, but in believing, in one sense, there is a repentance. There is a, uh, there must be a, a change of mind, a change of heart, a, a turning of our minds and our hearts away from ourselves, away from our old ways, away from the world, and a looking to the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance of life will, if it is true faith, will inevitably follow, will inevitably be seen in our lives, uh, but it is a uh, uh, as it were, a turning of our, the eyes of our hearts away from anything else and putting them upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And that change of mind, metanoia as repentance is literally in the Greek, uh, uh, exhibited in our faith in him. Simply trust him, trust in him alone. It is not by faith. And our efforts and our works, it's not by faith and our own virtue, but by faith looking to the Lord Jesus Christ alone. And millions of people in glory will be able to testify that they but looked to the Lord Jesus Christ and he saved them and he gave them eternal life. And he was to them their rock and their salvation. David knew, David knew from his own new birth that this was the way to be saved. David, again, also practically proved it many times that we may, when shut up unto the Lord, we may trust in him and we may pour out our hearts before him and God will be a refuge for us. Trust in him at all times, ye people, pour out your heart. Your faith must be sincere and from the heart. In one sense, he calls us to, to acknowledge that we are sinners 
and that we need forgiveness and pardon, but to look to him for that. And God will be, God is a refuge for us. And then he goes on to warn of trust in men, in anything else. Surely men of low degree are vanity. Men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Very unflattering picture of humanity uh, as we are without the Lord. Surely men of low degree are a vanity in one sense. Better to be of low degree, you are just vain. One's life is empty and meaningless without the Lord. Uh, we work, uh, we, we live, uh, we live in a sort of circular, vain way. I remember hearing a friend saying that a, a fireman in his uh, 50s uh, had been prompted to begin to seek the Lord. I don't know if he's ever found the Lord, but his daughter had, I think, become a believer. And he, after many years, uh, a, a responsible man in one sense, humanly speaking, but living, uh, working to live, living to work, just this endless circle and thinking in his 50s, what have I done? What has life been about? One would, in one sense, would wish that many people would ask those questions. But men of low degree, all of us, in one sense, are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. Those who are set up in human society, in one sense, are a lie. They deceive us that there is uh, worth and greatness and happiness to be had in the things of this world. Those who are set up as uh, opinion makers, if that's the right word, uh, philosophers, opinion makers, are literally a lie. We have uh, all the sort of uh, Marx and Darwin, one might say Muhammad and others, all uh, apart from the Lord, are there sadly uh, to deceive men and are a lie, and yet are held in great esteem by many to be laid in the balance there altogether lighter than vanity. And if I may apply it to the last of these five sayings, scripture alone, the word of God alone is true. Uh, the, the men may speak the truth about life, about God, in so much that they agree with the scriptures or speak from the scriptures. But uh, apart from the scriptures, we have no true and solid truth that we may rest our hearts and our souls upon. It is sad to see folk floundering and uh, floundering in the world. And there are all manner of theories as to how to, to live and to uh, be happy and so on. And yet never looking to the Lord, never trusting his word, never coming to the Savior through the scriptures, through the word of God. I had a very uh, interesting conversation with a young man. Thankfully, he was very willing to listen. Uh, you may see him. He uh, uh, drives, I wouldn't say drives, rides a almost fluorescent green electric bike with a big box on the back comes down this road. Uh, but uh, he said, oh, I have, uh, uh, he's talking about, he was willing to listen. He's talking about a Jesus consciousness and achieving uh, a Jesus consciousness that we all can achieve. And I was able to say, no, we, we can't achieve these things, but God can give us salvation and pointing him to the scriptures to read the New Testament. And uh, he, uh, he, he said to me, uh, is the kingdom of God within you? And I said, yes, when Christ comes to rule. Uh, and I pointed him, you read Matthew chapter five, you're reading the Sermon on the Mount. And very wonderful, 
the Lord's charter, as it were, for his kingdom, a wonderful truth uh, to guide, to point men to the Savior, to show them what is true, to teach them of their sin, uh, and to encourage them to put their trust in the Lord. But a wonderful, faithful testimony that will not let men down. And oh, that others would consider and, and take, take the scriptures up uh, and find in it a faithful and true witness uh, and point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes on the last few, uh, trust not in oppression, become not vain in robbery. Don't give yourselves to, to uh, sin, uh, which men will do uh, without the Lord. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Don't trust in riches, which again is a snare. But then God hath spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to to thy work. Power belongeth unto God. He alone is able to save. He alone is able to give new life to the heart of a lost sinner. And also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, that he is willing to forgive and to show mercy. And if I may, just uh, the, the last one, to the glory of God alone, all is to his glory alone. He is the only one that has power, power belongeth unto God to save. He alone has the mercy to save. And so all it is, is for the glory of God alone. He is the source of salvation. He is the one to whom we should give glory. And uh, it's, it is a wonderful sermon very plain, sorry, uh, psalm, very plain, very clear. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. Our last hymn will be just as I am, without one plea, that from the hymn writer encouraged to trust in the Lord as she was, to find forgiveness as she was, not trying to change herself in any way. I read... Uh, the testimony, well, it was written by the, the pastor, the one who had been counseling her, but of a lady who for a long while could not find the Lord until he essentially said to her that you are to simply trust him and come to him as you are. Try not to, to change yourself, uh, and, uh, but come to him as you are. Many, sadly, wait for supposed movings of the spirit but the lord would have people to come to him uh, as they are and to look to him alone for salvation let me read i hope it's not too uh, too difficult to follow all my life said she i have stopped at the same place i've read the bible and prayed but my mind would find some difficulty and stop there all my days i've been trying to find god in the wrong Wherein were you wrong yourself? I was not willing to trust God. I thought or tried to think it was not my fault that I was not a Christian. This is speaking and writing to the pastor. Your letter astonished me. How could I have been so ignorant of God? I did not know till I got your letter that a sinner may come to Christ just as he is. Seems to me that people do not understand that. I never understood it before i want you to preach that so that people may know it it was all new to me this is a church girl of many years first i did not believe it how could you know how i should be affected all along and after i should see the sinfulness of my heart and be determined to obey god but anyway she saw her need she came to the lord as she was and found the lord he said for many weeks, he'd seen her always miserable, never finding the Lord. But as soon as she trusted in the Lord alone, uh, she was saved. And uh, it was evident from her demeanor. And here, I think, 
That is what David is saying. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Obviously, it is counsel for all of us that love the Lord. We may trust in him at all times. But for those who haven't come to him, look to him. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Amen. Our last hymn is number 551, just as I am, without one plea.